Hi, I'm Vaji. Today I will be presenting our work on improving threat detection and investigation capabilities of commercial security tools using data provenance techniques. This is a joint work with Norton LifeLog Research Group and University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So cyber attacks are becoming increasingly targeted and sophisticated. A special kind of these attacks is called advanced persistent threat or APTs. These APT attacks infiltrate into target systems and try to reside there for a long period of time without being detected. In order to avoid detection, these APT attacks use living of the land attack strategy where they use tools or features that already exist in the target environment. By using such tools, attacker avoid actions that would immediately arouse suspicion. These tools are also known as dual use tools, which include PowerShell scripts, Windows management instrumentation, and Mimic apps. One of the most famous recent example of a cyber attack that highly, heavily exploited living off the land strategy was Petya or non Petya attack, which made headlines all over the world in 2017. One of the most widely used commercial security solution for combating such APT attacks is known as Endpoint Detection and Response Tool, or EDR, in short. These EDR tools consist of three main features. First, these EDR tools constantly monitor system or enterprise-wide activities by collecting system logs or audit logs on the end hooks. Second, these EDR tools generate threat alert if some potentially malicious behavior is observed on the end hooks. Now, these threat alerts are raised by matching end host system events against knowledge bases of adversarial tactic techniques and procedures, also known as TTPs where tactics describe why an adversary performs an action, while the techniques describe how exactly they achieve their action. Most of the EDR tools in the market use MITRE attack knowledge base of TTPs to detect these adversarial actions. Uh, finally, once an adversary act behavior is detected on the end host after matching against TTP, EDR tools generate threat alert. These threat alerts are then analyzed by security analysts to separate false alarms from two, two attacks. However, these EDR tools suffer from three main, challenge, three main challenges. First challenge is that these EDR tools are highly false positive prone. This is because TTP knowledge bases are optimized for recall, not for precision, which means that they try to catch all possibilities of attack, even if that technique is widely used by benign purposes. For example, there is a file deletion technique in MITRE attack database, which will be matched whenever there is a file deleted on the end host. Now, as you can imagine that this technique happens all the time on the host, and it is really difficult to discern between file deletion from a normal execution and file deletion from attacker attempts. As a result, EDR tools are prone to high volume of false alarm, and leads to which leads to threat alert fatigue problem where analysts are unable to respond to alerts because they receive so many each day. And due to this problem, two attacks detected by EDR tools are usually at risk of being lost in the noise of false alarms. The second challenge arises from the dubious nature of EDR-generated threat alerts, um, such that after receiving a threat alert, the onus is on the cyber analyst to manually piece together the chain of system events and generate context around alerts for investigation. Significant effort and expertise are required to separate false alarms from two alerts, which can potentially delay the whole investigation process. Finally, the last challenge arises from the high volume of system logs collected on the end host and long-term storage cost of such logs for, uh, for after the effect investigation. EDR usually uses a small FIFO queue to buffer few days of system logs. Now, in the case of a long-lived AP attack campaigns, the company can potentially lose critical log data necessary for forensic investigation if they don't store logs for enough time. So in order to solve these challenges, we built RapSheet. RapSheet leveraged data provenance techniques to solve these shortcomings of existing EDR tools. We built RapSheet based on observation that threat alerts are usually not isolated. APT attacks usually conform to a kill chain where attacker performs various action in certain order to achieve their goal. For example, privilege escalation followed by credential dumping. Now that if we can piece together se these several causally related actions or alerts, we can do much better risk assessment of these threat alerts. This is exactly the idea behind RAPSHE system. We give threat score to each generated alert based on all the causally related alerts that happened 
before the candidate alert. Moreover, correlating all these threat alerts provides security analyst, analyst a compact visualization of multi-stage APT attack, which can possibly accelerate the investigation. In order to reason about causally related alerts happen in the enterprise, we introduced the notion of tactical provenance analysis, which is derived from classical data provenance analysis. Before we look into how tactical provenance analysis work, let's understand what is data provenance. So data provenance is a detailed history of system execution. It is usually represented as a graph where vertices represent systems objects such as file and, um, and processes and edges represent event relationship or causal relationship between them. Investigator can use these provenance graph to, to investigate threat alerts and find root cause of the alert using backward tracing query. For example, if mal.exe is making a connection to a malicious IP address, admin can use this graph to see how um, mal.exe um, was came into their system. Now let's look how data tactical provenance analysis work by first understanding the architecture of rap sheet system. There are two inputs to the rap sheet system. First, it needs system logs, and uh, and and second, it needs threat alerts. RapSheet uses these two inputs to build provenance graph database. And then um, upon incident, in, incident investigation, RapSheet performs tactical provenance analysis, where RapSheet first generates the, the, uh, the provenance graph of the host under investigation. Then RapSheet generates initial infection point graph. And after that, the ta it generates tactical provenance graph. Finally, RapSheet uses these tactical provenance graph to assign threat scores and triage threat alerts for investigation. I will go over these three components in much more detail in next few slides. So first, we will build the IIP graph or initial infection point graph. For that, we first generate backward tracing path of the, all the given alerts. Um, let's say we have three alerts generated now in, in our enterprise, which are shown on the slide. Consider uh, these vertices to be um, a system objects such as file or processes. For these three alerts, we will generate backward tracing path, which, which will give us the ancestry of these alerts um, or, or the chain of events that basically led to these threat alerts. Once we have generated the backward tracing path, we merge the paths um, which are uh, part of the longer paths. For example, for our running example, the part two can be part of one, so we merge part two into part one. Once we have generated the backward tracing paths, uh, we find the first process or the actor that raised suspicion in all these paths. Our intuition behind that is that after initial compromise, attacker can launch various processes which will have their own separate path. For example, Vertex V in our running example um, launch process with vertex W and vertex A. Um, so we generate a subgraph rooted at the those initial infection point vertices, and we call these um, subgraph initial infection point graph or IIP graph. For our running example, the final IIP graph is shown on the right hand side of the slide. Once we have generated the IIP graph, we will generate the tactical provenance graph. The, the reason to generate tactical provenance graph or TPG from IIP graph is that we want to find the exact temporal ordering between all the causally related threat alert that, that exist in the IIP graph. Thus, we perform happens before analysis using timestamps on IIP graph and draw sequence edges between those uh, threat alerts or events. For our running example, we had three threat alerts events in our IAP graph. The subscripts in the edge annotations roughly means the order based on timestamps. We perform happens before analysis on the example graph, and we generate TPG graph, a TPG shown on the right hand side. Now we use this TPG for threat score assignment and also to provide investigator with compact visualization of APT attack campaign. In order to assign threat, score, uh, threat, uh, threat scores to these TPGs, uh, we will use uh, we will uh, first assign threat score to each alert present in the TPG. 
we use MITRE severity and likelihood of exploit scores and then combine those scores based on the formula shown on the slide. Once we have assigned score to each alert in the TPG, we aggregate those scores to give one score to each TPG. To do that, we find the longest subsequence of these ordered alert that is consistent with the phase order of MITRE tactical kill chain. We multiply the scores of the individual alerts in this subsequence to give an aggregate score to TPG. Our intuition is that we want to maximize the score if attacker perform tactics in the order given by MITRE kill chain. So we assign scores based on this scheme using formula shown on the slide. Now we use this uh, assigned scores of the TPG to triage the threat alerts. Now that we have solved the first two shortcomings of EDR tool uh, using TPGs um, and ranking those TPGs based on the threat score, let me give you a short overview of our log reduction scheme to solve the third challenge of storage inefficient, inefficiency that exists in EDR tools. So to, better, so to better utilize the limited space available on the host for long-term retention um, of uh, logs, we present a novel log reduction technique that preserves the TPG generation capabilities from those logs. This ensures that we can still identify the causal li links between the existing and future alerts and provide a uh, compact, compact summary of the APT attack campaigns to the investigators. We formalize two rules to prune system logs while preserving this TPG generation capability. Details related to those rules are in the paper. So to evaluate our system, we took semantic, uh, uh, semantic EDR tool, which is widely used um, in, in, in the world. We configured this EDR tool with 67 MITRE techniques. We used data set of 40 million uh, events from 34 hosts in, in collected from semantic enterprise. Du during our collection period, semantic EDR generated 58,000 alerts out of which 1,000 alerts were from two attacks while 57,000 alerts were from false alarms. First, we generated TPGs from those for 58,000 alerts. Um, from, uh, we got 676 TPGs from the false alarms while we got five TPGs from uh, alerts related to two attacks. After that, we measure the effectiveness of our approach in triaging threat alerts or TPGs. For, for that, we gave TPG threat score based on the threat score assignment scheme presented earlier, and then ran them based on those scores. And finally, we plotted a CDF for those ranked true alerts and false alarm TPG. We can see from this plot that TPG related to true uh, attacks were significantly ranked higher than the false alarm. More, moreover, if we use a separation threshold at the minimum scoring true attack TPG, then we can separate or eliminate 98% of the false alarm from consideration. We also measure the log reduction um, of uh, log reduction of uh, using our scheme, um, and we found that we can reduce log by 63%. Or in other words, we can increase the log buffer capacity on the host by 2.7 times. In conclusion, we propose a viable solution for incorporating data provenance into commercial EDR tools. We interfaced our system with widely used EDR tool by Semantic and showed that we significantly improve its threat detection and investigation capabilities. Finally, we show that our log reduction technique dram dramatically reduced log uh, storage overhead. Thank you for your attention.